We can do that on the east side of Trail Baptist Church Facebook page. We do uh, uh, remember that announcement there. And then also, too, Jolly Bunch this Friday at 9 o'clock. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, they'll get back into doing that in 15 months. I'm looking forward to that this Friday. So we do remember that coming up at 9 o'clock uh, for breakfast. And then uh, also, too, there's a couple other things. Of course, tonight after service, we'll be having refreshments over in the uh, fellowship hall. So we do remember that uh, after service tonight. Uh, my oldest son uh, is taking off to the Air Force next Monday. I do remember him and prayers. So he'll be over there tonight. So do remember that after service tonight. And cake and ice cream. We'll get you all sugared up and send you home. Amen. To your kids. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably the other way around. But anyway, you get to enjoy that tonight. And of course, brother, uh, let me make sure I get your name right, brother. I know your last name's Fernandez. That's not too hard. Jovalito, I get that right? A R I. So Jovalito is going to be speaking to us here in a little bit. Remember him in your prayers. Uh, I talked to him back there a few moments ago. Uh, sometimes God has a way of putting things into perspective for you. Uh, Jovalito has been in the United States since 2019. He had to come over and finish his education. He was unable to do that online. He was getting his master's degree. Okay. Well, the thing you got to keep in mind is he left a newborn baby and a nine-year-old daughter and his wife. And he's not seen them in two years. So you need to remember him in your prayers. He finished up his education. He's going back to August 5th. And he told me a few moments ago back there. He said, I left my little boy. He was crawling. Of course, at age two, he's probably walking now. So uh, he'll get to go back home and uh, get to be with him. So pray for him. Pray that God will you know, continue to watch over him while he's here. Of course, he, he's taking his second shot. 15th, that's, that's good for him. The Philippines, they're not quite up uh, in the age category that we're at are yet as far as getting the vaccine to everybody. So remember him in your prayers, but hopefully pray for him. And things will go well between now and August 5th. And of course, it's flight back. I know that's a pretty long flight back over there. So remember him in your prayers. And God will protect him. He'll be able to get back home to his family and get back home to his uh, mission work over there. So we do remember him in your prayers. It is good to have him with us tonight. And we're looking forward to to uh, hearing from him. Uh, I got uh, some uh, new requests here. I'll go over the ones that I got this morning. Uh, some, new, some new requests that were given to me. Uh, Helen Blevins' sister, Brenda Snead, uh, she has to have a PET scan done. They're thinking she may have lung cancer. So uh, please remember uh, Helen's sister, Brenda Snead, in your prayers. We found that one out today. So uh, please remember her. And then uh, Sister Brenda gave me some requests for Brother Tanner. You remember him in your prayers for his mom, Lori. Uh, they're still waiting to get the results back. They feel pretty confident they got everything, but they're still waiting on getting the results back. So do remember them in your prayers. And then uh, Jerry Miller and Melody Carmichael. I know both of these folks. And then uh, we found out this week, uh, we've been requesting prayer for Bethyra uh, Hobson as she passed away. So uh, request uh, Mike and Sister Karen. So do, do remember that family uh, in your prayers. And then uh, Sister Chris uh, came in a few moments ago, Chris Pippen did, and they told me that Corky, her son, uh, has a heart cath to be 15. That's this Tuesday. So remember him in your prayers, okay, as he uh, goes in for that. And then uh, Brother Alan uh, Walser uh, is telling me that uh, Gary McKinney, this is his uh, sister Judy's uh, ex-husband, that he passed away this week. So remember his family in your prayers and also Remember our sister Judy as well uh, in your prayer. She's the one that was battling cancer. So we do remember them. And then remember Brian's daddy, Terry. Uh, is he doing okay, Brian? Okay. So remember, remember Brother Terry in your prayer. He didn't get rushed to the hospital today. He's in John City now. You don't know the room number, do you? See her this week. They, uh, they're not as restricted as they have been. They still have restrictions in place, but they will go by and see her. Now, they will keep my promise. I had promised her 15 months ago that I would bring her a slice of cookie from the Great American Cookie Company for her birthday. And I told her that she was the last visit that I made in the nursing home before the COVID restrictions went in. 
I was there with Greg on a Friday. And I was telling I said, when your birthday comes up, I'll have that slice of cookie cake for you. We'll do that. The next week, they shut everything down. That was almost 15 months ago. So uh, this past uh, Friday, I went out there to Great American Cookie Company, got my cookie, took it to Thelma. And I know one thing, she's on sugar high. <laughs> I'd say the nursing home people out there are not happy with me, Sister Carolyn. I hope they're not too upset with me. But, uh, but Brother Greg got him some too, right, Brother Greg? So, uh, you know, do appreciate what they to do that. But uh, remember them with your prayers. She looked pretty good. And if you uh, if you think of it in the, in the, in the bulletin with her address and stuff, send her a card. I want you to appreciate that. Uh, things keep going on. Hopefully more and more uh, restrictions will get lifted. And we'll hopefully go you know, a little bit more in and out uh, in the nursing homes and hospitals. But we, we remember that and keep praying for them at this time. God bless you once again for being with us tonight. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. Everybody look like they're on the edge of their seat, Brother Fernandez. And they're, they're anxiously awaiting. I don't know if they're anxiously awaiting you or thinking about cake and ice cream. <laughs> I'm not cake sure. And ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Karen, go ahead. Would you please put my brother Ronald Pearson on the prayer list? Um, he called me today and they have found a lump on one of his breasts and they're going to have to they're sending him for a mammogram that's your brother my brother when's he going for that they're supposed to call him and let him know Ronald Pearson, uh, Sister Karen's brother, is going to have to have a mammogram done. He found a lump uh, in his breast. Remember him this morning. Uh, Brenda. He, he told me last Wednesday he was going to get a snickerdoodle. He said, I'm going to get me something with peanuts in. Hey, ain't that right, Brother Danny? Did you get your snickerdoodle? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Something taken away like we've had the last year and a half. You know, when we get it back, we're excited, amen. Amen.
Ah, cebola, que eu sei, tá? Ah, cebolas. <coughs> This time we'll go back to Lord and Prayer and we'll get Brother Hernandez up there. Let's go to Lord and Prayer. All in heaven as always, we're just very thankful to be able to be back in the house of the Lord. And as we mentioned a few moments ago, it was really just refreshing just to see some things we saw this week. And especially when the young people being able to get back and some of the various fall camps and then some get back in the Bible camps and some of the summer activities that they're accustomed to. Well, it's refreshing to, to hear those things. Of course, the Bible school, we've got ours coming up, and it's just, it's just exciting to be able to get to do some of those things again. We thank you for that. The blessings you've given us today. Everybody seems to be doing really well. And Father, I pray you continue to bless us upon each and every one. Father, you heard the request here tonight. There are several names that you mentioned off a couple of families and of loved ones that have gone home to be with you. And Father, I just pray. Continue to pray those families arms of love, giving them comfort from heaven as they stand in their day. Father, for those that have tests this week, we've got some that we mentioned, we've got some on our prayer list that we have some tests that are upcoming here in the very near future. Father, you know the need that is there. And as always, we place everything in your capable hands. And we know firsthand that that prayer works. If we put folks in your hands, that you'll take care of them. And Father, I pray that you get involved in these situations and give these folks the touch from heaven. Stand in need of. Father, we pray for Brother Brother Nico tonight. He comes and he stands before us. Father, we were listening to him back there, and you can tell that you know, he's been happy to be in the United States, but he is looking forward to going home being with his family. And Father, I pray that over the next few weeks you just watch over <coughs> him, protect him, keep him in your care. And Father, I pray that he gets to get done what needs to get done between now and August the 5th. And Father, I pray your hedge protection. On him here in the States and as he travels back to his country. Father, I pray you watch over him on his plane flight when he gets back to his wife and kids. Father, in his ministry that he's got waiting on him over there. Father, I pray you really watch over him and too. Keep him in your care as he gets back to him safe. Father, I pray that you just use him as a vessel tonight. Speak to him as only you can. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And we pray. This time, brother. Brother Nico, you come on up. Let's give him a welcome tonight. Church. Good evening. My name is Rigolito Fernandez, a Filipino guy with a Mexican name. <laughs> I have two kids and one wife. I will make sure the number two kids and one wife. Uh, I grew up in a Roman Catholic family. My mom and dad are so uh, devoted in that religion. When I was uh, 18 years old, one missionary went to our place and started visiting uh, house to house and uh, the villages. So, in August 20, year 2000, I was invited with my friend to go and that was my first time pastor to attend in a Baptist church because all I know when I grew up I'm just attending in a Roman Catholic church there they will taught you, teach you how to do good works in order for you to have salvation for your soul and do the sacraments of that religion one of my friends so persistent and he always uh, inviting, inviting me to come and attend to his church. And I said yes just to get rid of his friend invitation. So on that day, August 20, I was uh, attending the church. I was at the back of the 
fresh. I'm just observing, Pastor. It is uh, un unusual for me, uncommon, and familiar. Because the only thing I know is the, the priest the, uh, getting his message. And one young man during the Sunday school time stood up and brought his Bible. All the visitors, the first first time and second time visitor, uh, he, he gathered it in one small room, and I just sitting there with my friend that was invited, uh, my doing the invitation. He said, "Just listen and be honest to, you, to yourself." So I'm just sitting there, and uh, the worker or the, that man he started open he opened the Bible, just open. A couple of verses in Romans, starting in Romans chapter 3, verse number 10. I read them, there's none righteous, no, not one. I told to myself, I'm a good person. But the Bible says, there's no righteous, no, not one. In verse, uh, the following verse that he mentioned, Romans chapter 3, verse number 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm not comfortable on my seat that time because he's uh, telling me that I'm a sinner and I'm fall short of the glory of God. And the only thing I know is I'm a good person and I'm, I'm a good looking person. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> the following verse that he mentioned, Romans chapter 6, verse number 10. For, uh, for the wages of sin, Explain about the death in the Bible. So that the time that's made, uh, that I believe that, that that is the time when the Lord spoke to my heart, and I need to say it. And I'm glad that verse didn't end on that phrase. For the wages of sin is death, and the following phrase, but the gift of God. In August twenty. <clears throat> 9.30 in the morning, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord personal Savior. In that time, I got saved. I'm a two-year alcoholic also. I tried to change my life to my, to my own strength. But that time, uh, when the Lord saved me, he, every day He worked on my life. And change me, and not also not not just on, only he saved me, he changed me, and he called me to the full time ministry. Right. And I thank the Lord because of one missionary who went to our place and shared the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. That's why every time I visit a church here in the United States, if I saw a Filipino missionary or a missionary to the Philippines, I'm so thankful to that church. Because I got saved because of one missionary Man. that went to our place Man. and shared the gospel. And this is the ministry. <clears throat> it was taken 2018 uh, during my application to come over here to study in Marietta Bible College for two years, taking my advanced biblical studies. And I'm glad that.
18 two birds in one preaching. Just one gathering and the two listeners, their parents and the kids. So if you will total the the average attendance, almost 200 a year that got listened to the gospel being preached during the PBS. And most of our children's center right now, my wife teaching those kids every Saturday morning, and 60% uh, of the attendance in our BBS are her ministry right now. So, children, it is easy to reach the, the kids. And uh, I'm still doing Bible study every Friday night uh, for the uh, young people and also for the adults. My kids, uh, I, my wife gathered the kids every Saturday morning and I'm ministering as an assistant pastor of every Sunday. So I will be visiting uh, on that village from Monday to Saturday. I'm going to be a assistant pastor in my own church. <clears throat> so that is the ministry in the Philippines. <clears throat> and I'm here looking for a partner in the ministry. Uh, just like uh, your pastor said a while ago that I've been here for 20 months away from my family. We have a video chat every day night here and morning there in the Philippines. We have 12 hours drop. So right now, uh, early morning there in the Philippines of Monday. So every every night, probably around 11 o'clock in the evening or 12 or 1 in the morning, we have a, I talk to my wife. I always report to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a good person <laughs> to my wife. <clears throat> well, I'm going to sing a song. I hope and I pray that it become a blessing, that video presentation. And also, my song. The Bible says, make a joyful noise. But for you, maybe it's a noise. For me, it's a joy. <laughs> it's a joy to sing for the Lord. There is coming a day when no heart shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day.
wasn't there by the shore of Galilee when Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see.
let's stand please as we give reverence to the word of God as we read Jonah chapter 1 Jonah chapter 1 verse 1, 2, and 3 I'm going to read this couple of verses and as you follow and as you read also on the Bible Jonah chapter 1 Verse number one, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse number three, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship, and going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. You may be seated and we will pray first as we study the Word of God. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we are so blessed, O oh God, that we have an opportunity, a freedom, a privilege, O oh God, to study your Word. As we gather here, I pray, O oh God, that you help us as we meditate, study your Word. I pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit speak in our midst. And I pray, O oh God, that your name, your Son, be magnified and glorified, O oh Lord, in our midst. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Jonah, who among you are familiar with this prophet? You know what? Jonah in the Philippines are are often to be fed to the fish as we minister to the fish because as I said a while ago that we are just here on the ocean and for the kids it is easy for them to imagine to have an imagination to their mind the big fish there's a great fish here so we will study this evening Three great things behind this great account. Three great things behind this great account. We can say that there are three great things here. We can uh, go to verse number two. There's a great city. And in verse number four, the great wind. And last great things here is the great fish. Uh, I don't know why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. I don't have the idea. But while I'm studying this book, this whole chapter, from chapter 1, chapter 2, and then went to the chapter 4, I understand what is the problem of Jonah, why he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Some reason, some scholar says that Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because of some scholar says he was afraid to that to that people, to that great city. Why? Because those people, if you are their enemy, they are brutally and wicked people. If they captured you as their enemy, they will skin you alive. Yeah. So maybe that is one of the reasons why Jonah didn't want to go to that place. Me too, I will not go to that place. If that is uh, this kind of... Uh, uh, reason and second says that some scholar says that this place is the enemy of the people of God that's yeah. why he was a Jew and that people are Gentiles and they are pagan and he didn't want to go to that place because uh, according to their tradition and customs they are not allowed to mingle with the Gentiles for you for us uh, for the Jews we are just like a dogs in their sight. We are unclean for, 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 for them. So maybe that is one of the reasons of Jonah why he didn't want to go to that place. Because, because that place is a place of dogs, a place of Gentiles, a place of their enemies, and a place that about to their costume or to their tradition, they are not allowed to mingle with them. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ sent you at the well? Jacob's well, there's a Samaritan woman. A question about the woman, how is it that you are being a Jew? Have conversation with me. 
I know your tradition. That's um, one of the reasons why Jonah didn't want to go to that place. But we will see that great, uh, three great things here. First, the great city called Nineveh. Today, there is no Nineveh today. It was changed to a name. And uh, you will apply this, this uh, city in our present time. Uh, your great city today, your Nineveh today, is your fieldwork. My fieldwork right now is on that village, Barangay Puntaket, San Antonio, Sambales, Philippines, 2206. So, I'll be going there, I'll be going back there just to uh, to win those people for, for Christ and to build church in that area because on that area, I need to travel uh, five miles away, preacher. For you, it is easy for you to get on that kind of uh, place, five miles. It's, it is an easy. For us in the Philippines, it is hard for us to uh, to travel on that kind of uh, span of uh, uh, distance. As you can see, I have a picture that I'm driving a tricycle. We call it that is a public transportation in the Philippines, and that is a common transportation in the Philippines, bus, jeep, and tricycle. Every Sunday morning, Pastor, I will come to that village for about 25 minutes to travel just to pick those kids. You know that tricycle for the American, if I have an American passenger on that tricycle, just only two, one on the inside and the other on the back of the driver. Just only two passengers. But for the Filipino, because we are too skinny, <laughs> I just, uh, we have a passenger, normally the common passenger of tricycle is, is about four to five passengers, including the driver. But that time, Pastor, you can see that the pictures, you can guess how many kids that I have on that tricycle. I have a trick for you if you guess that. We have an ice cream there. <laughs> I have 13 kids. Wow. wow. Overload. Wow. 13 kids. And I'm just driving 5 miles an hour. That's why 5 miles takes me 25 to 30 minutes to get to, to my home church, to our church. That's why my burden right now, I will not do that anymore. To pick those kids every Sunday morning to bring those kids. Sometimes I I go back again just to get another 13 kids. And it's hard for me to pick those kids if it is raining. My burden is not I will not do that anymore because it is too risky for the likes of the kids. You know the kids are too hyper. They are playing while I'm driving. Just only five miles. And oh. I know the Filipino driver are idiot and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic uh, signs just only uh, an optional for, for us, or just like a suggestion. <laughs> That's the way it is, Filipino driver. So I'm taking care of those kids while I am on the road. That's why I, don't, I will not do that anymore. I will not bring those kids to my church, but I will bring the church to their place. That's why my burden to build a uh, building there, church property there, to have a gathering place for those kids, and even in our BPS, to accommodate 120 children. Not under the tree. <laughs> so, that's, so that great city, that is my Field work today. For you, maybe your field work is this community. Maybe your uh, great mini bit today, your great city today is your friends. Maybe your great mini bit today is your loved ones. Maybe your great city today is your classmates. So you have a mini bit today. If you have a friends, you have a loved ones that never. Share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your Nineveh today. For Jonah, his Nineveh back then is just only 300 miles. Or 
600 miles away from his place. A three days journey, Pastor. Just only a three days journey for him to get to that place, to that great city. But he went to the opposite direction. He went to uh, 6,000 miles or 3,000 miles. So for 600 miles supposed to be, he went to the opposite direction and went to the uh, 3,000 miles away from his present place. So my place is just only 10,000 miles away from my family. So that is the great city, but he chose to to go the to go to the opposite direction instead of going to Nineveh. So don't be like Jonah. In other words, and there's a another great here is the great wind. Great wind is just the Lord sent that great wind to redirect the path of Jonah, because I believe. Jonah was on the wrong track. He was on the wrong direction. That's why the Lord sent the great wind to put us. Sometimes the Lord uh, sent a great wind for our lives to put us uh, into a proper place, in a right track, in a right position. Sometimes we have a great problem. Don't worry, everything works for you to, for good. Amen. Yes, because I know the Lord in control. Yes, and I believe the Lord sent that great wind for Jonah to redirect his uh, track. That last great thing here, the great fish. Great fish, it, it, it was uh, represent uh, or a symbol, symbolically a preservation. Uh, the Lord sent the great fish to preserve the life of Jonah. Because he was thrown in the middle of the sea. In the great wind. In the middle of the sea. That's why the Lord sent the great fish to preserve Jonah. And the great fish is the place of his revival. In the ship, he was sleeping. But when he was in the belly of that great fish, he was praying. So, for Jonah, that great fish... Is the place of his revival or a place of his realization? Oh Lord, I will go to Nineveh right now. Because he was in the belly of that great fish. For us today, the great fish today is the church. This is a place of revival, it is a place of our preservation, it is a place of our realization because. God's word. Amen. Because of God's word. And I believe I always uh, if you don't mind, this is only just my observation. Uh, I don't know if some American friends get offended when I always share this one. This is only my observation. When the the virus hits the United States of America the people are trying to close the churches. They try to close the church. And it's okay because of the protocol or some of the protection, health issues. But the problem is right now, the, <clears throat> the Christian, they don't want to go to church, but they want to go to Walmart. They are afraid to go to the church. But they are not afraid to go to Walmart. Amen. That's only an observation that get offended. But it is true, right? Yeah. You are afraid to go to the church because oh, there's a virus there. But in the Walmart, you are not afraid to go, and you don't know the people that went that place. And that is the place of you can get the the virus. There are two different. Uh, there, there's a difference between those two places, the church and the Walmart. If you get the virus in the Walmart, 
I will make sure that no one will pray for you. <laughs> yes. The only thing the Walmart wants from you, your money. They don't care if you get their bios. But, I believe your pastor here, if you get the bios on the church, in the church, someone will pray for you. Amen. And I believe there's a power in prayer, pastor. Amen. And there's a miracle in prayer. Right. Don't be afraid to die because he is appointed in Christ. Right. Even you have a virus or you don't have a virus, you will die. Hello, Christian. Stand right now because the day is a perilous time. Amen. Okay, I will share to you the three great things behind this great account. First, the great man. The Bible says, verse number two, arise, go to Nineveh. The word go in the Bible, it means it takes for you to act. It is an action word. And this great command is not only for Jonah. This is for all of us Christians. That the Lord commanded us to go and preach the gospel. Not only for the preacher, not only for the pastor, not only for the missionary, but for all who believe the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we are commanded to go. And that is a great command. Why? Because it came from the great God. And this great command is not an option. It's not a suggestion. Right. It is a command. Right. The only thing that we can do for this great command is to obey. Right. To obey. Uh, there's a great command and great urgency doing this because Paul said, redeeming the time. It is not a suggestion or an optional. Let us go and preach the gospel. Uh, for you American friends, if you were going to visit the Philippines, uh, I talked to one uh, man here that you experienced to visit the, the Philippines. If you're going to visit the Philippines, for you American friends, it is easy for you to minister to the people. Why? Because in our mindset in the Philippines, the American people are just like a Hollywood actor and actress. Yes, we are celebrities in our place. We thought that we are amazed to your to the color of your skin, to the blonde, blonde hair, <laughs> the blue eyes. We are amazed on that uh, kind of uh, colors. So it is easy for you to minister to our people because you don't want to. You don't need to call them. They will gather you just to say hello. <laughs> and that's it. You can minister to them. There's a great command. Church, there's a great command. Not for the apostles, not for the disciples, not for Jonah, but for all of us. There's a great command. And the second thing, the great thing is I know that you are hungry. Second, there's a great chance. Yeah. There's a great chance. Verse number three, But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship. First, first chance and opportunity to do this thing. He found a ship. But going to the opposite direction. But he can use that ship going to Tarshish. Right? And I believe that's so all because uh, just only it takes for him a day journey when uh, that great fish uh, spilled up this prophet. So, there's a great chance for him to obey the great command. Huh? For you, American, uh, always American, I'm sorry about that. Because there's the Philippine Ray and there's only one. <laughs> uh, you know, You've been blessed by our God. I believe this nation is a great nation. I believe that. Why you have a great resources here? You have a great technology. Your money is a great 
uh, higher than our money. You know what? I'm just uh, raising $30 in a month. I'm just going to churches, just raising $30 in a month. But, uh, they will commit unto me a $30. Why $30? Because $1 in the Philippines and for you, you can get a dollar for a sweet tea or one soft drinks in McDonald's or one hot coffee in McDonald's. In a dollar, preacher. In the Philippines, if you will convert that money, a dollar, going to peso, one dollar, you can purchase uh, one kilo of rice, Pastor. Yeah. One kilo of rice can feed one family in one day. Yeah. For you, it's only a drink, but for the Filipino, it's a meal for the whole day. One dollar for you is a drink, for us, it's a rice. There's a great chance here. There's a great opportunity. There's a great resources. And preacher, he just only he, did, he just found out a sheep, but he paid the fair drop. He has some money. He found a sheep. He has some money in his pocket. So it means this great this prophet. He has all the capabilities to go in that place for him. Obey the great man. You are still alive today. You are still strong. I know you. Some some of us has, have a health issue, but be grateful unto God because you are still alive. Yeah. And that is a great opportunity. Yeah. There's a song, "Only One Life." Only one life, so soon it will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one chance to do His will. So give to Jesus all your days. It's the only light that pays. When you recall, you have but one light. We have one light. And it's, not, it's, it's for you to, where you're going to use that one light. Serving the Lord, our Master, our Savior, our Serving yourself. There's a great chance. And last, there's a great pride. Verse number two. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. And cry against it. From hell, there's someone crying there. Remember the account of Lazarus and the rich man? The rich man Trying to persuade Abraham. Father Abraham! Yeah. Send Lazarus to my father's house! Why? Because I have five brethren in my father's house. Yeah. Preacher, in hell, there's a missionary. He wants to send Lazarus to his father's house. There's crying out there in hell. And in, in the Lord's prayer, he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he will send laborers. Yeah. Because truly, the harvest is plentiful, mm -hmm. And the laborers are few. We need laborers right now because we're giving the time. The days are evil. Yeah. As we study the book of Jonah, Preacher, I, how I wish Jonah is a great preacher also. In chapter 3, verse number 3, let's go to, the, to that verse. Chapter 3, Jonah chapter 3. Verse number 3, so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a city great city of three days journey. And verse number 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried. He's preaching. 
Just only eight words. Eight words. Let's count it. Verse number four. Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Preacher, just only eight words. Remember Noah? He preached for 120 years. Just only eight persons believe on his preaching. Jeremiah pre preached about 40 years. No, no converts. But this man, this prophet of God, just only eight words. Verse number five. So the people of Nineveh believe God. The whole city for just only eight words of his message, his preaching, the whole city, small or great, they believe in God. They believe in God. What a great preacher. What a great evangelist. But there's a problem in his heart. Let's go to Acts. This will be the last verse. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7 is the account of Stephen who preached from Genesis chapter 2 when, uh, when God called Abraham to the resurrected Christ. How big that message pastor? From Genesis to, to Acts chapter 1. From Genesis till to Acts chapter 1. That is his message. But you know what? The result of his preaching, verse number 59, chapter 7 of Acts, and they stoned his event. What a big message. But he was stoned to death. Stephen was stoned to death. But you know what? The difference between this person and prophet Jonah. Let's go to the verse 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Preacher, a short prayer, just only eight words also. Lord, lay not this sin to their church. What a prayer. You know what the difference between these two persons? Compassion. You know what? He, he preached from Genesis to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and he was stoned to death. But through that prayer with compassion, there's one person there got saved. Amen. That his soul become whole. And he was a missionary to the Gentiles. That's why the gospel went to the Gentiles like us. Because of that prayer. Amen. Why? Because of his compassion. Amen. The problem today, many, many Christians today, their problem is compassion. In Jude, and some have compassion making a good day. And some Jonah have no compassion to the people of that universe. But this person, though he was stoned to death, he cried with a loud voice and prayed with a compassionate prayer. It's only eight words, but the gospel reached us because of that prayer. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Church. Tennessee, I'll be able to say this word. The uh, uh, bucket, thank you. There you go, brother, give them me too.
offering from Brother Gilbert. He does not appreciate you being with us. As soon as uh, we get done receiving the offering, uh, you go ahead and head on over to the fellowship hall. Oh, Daniel God, there we go. And uh, we'll, we'll have refreshments over there. But God bless you for being here tonight. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. I appreciate you being with, you, with us. And uh, I tell you what, Brother Gilbert Lito, I know you probably know this, but you know what the number eight represents, don't you? It represents new beginnings. Yeah, right there. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all you do for us. And Father, we thank you. And to Brother Joe Alito tonight, for his uh, compassion and his heart for his people. And Father, we uh, heard him tonight. And he began to speak right off the bat. I know you appreciate the fact that uh, our nation, uh, as we've said oftentimes, represents over 90% of the world's mission. And it puts it out there the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, he was very thankful for that tonight. That missionary reached out to him and he came to know Jesus Christ as his Savior. Uh, Lord, we know we live in, in the last days, as, as he pointed out on several occasions, a perilous time. So, Father, we still have an obligation to do the best that we can to get as many one to the Lord before Jesus comes and gets his church. Father, I pray now that you bless this offering. You would upbuild your kingdom. Once again, Father, we ask you, please. Be with Brother Fernandez as he gets makes his preparations uh, to go back home. Uh, Father, give him safe to travel uh, along in the States as he travels back home. And do it so as for his labor. Father, as always, we'll praise you for all you do for us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. As soon as they get past you, you can head over that way towards Bethlehem. Amen. 